So may I ask you for attention again. Uh, one information uh, regarding the slides. Uh, we are going to put uh, slides of all presenters uh, to the Slack. Jan is working on it, so there will be uh, the, the slides available soon, and uh, also we will place the slides maybe a bit later uh, on our web. So on the, if you will check the web uh, of the summer school, uh, as you remember the list of the presenters, so next to each picture of the presenter uh, or bio of the presenter, there will be the slides available soon. So uh, now we are going to have uh, the second presentation uh, today on uh, quite similar topics, so I hope that you checked, guys, that you are not overlapping too much. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm looking forward to see uh, new uh, results of uh, Jan Feigl in uh, his uh, research, and uh, yes, go ahead. Thank you, Martin, uh, for the kind of introduction. Uh, do you hear me? Okay, perfect. So, uh, in this talk, uh, I would like to cover part that which will be used by you on this practical and hopefully on the uh, deployment on the real drones. So curvature constraint trajectory or multi-goal trajectory planning uh, is especially suitable for unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, what I am doing uh, is uh, robotic information gathering, uh, which is things related to different aspects, not only for the aerial vehicles, but also for the ground vehicles, especially ground working robots or multi-leg working robots, uh, including the exploration. But in this talk, I will specifically focus on the aerial uh, things or uh, the research results uh, we made. And the topics will roughly cover the main important parts which is uh, related to multi-goal pass planning, which is basically traveling salesman problem in robotic domain. Hopefully all of you know what is the traveling salesman problem. It has been mentioned today and also yesterday by Amanda. And uh, we will focus on this aspect for suitable for the area of vehicles, which usually require curvature constraint or smooth uh, trajectories, which also has been mentioned uh, yesterday by Tomasz Bacha. Uh, we will consider Dubin's vehicle as one of the most simple uh, model, but still has some challenges. Uh, then uh, we will uh, continue with this multi-robot, because this is the multi-robot system, uh, summer school. And uh, I will show you some of the existing methods, relatively simple, that can be implemented by you at the, at the practical. And especially these simple construction heuristics can really improve your solution which is expected to, to gain the lower score and to be uh, allowed to uh, deploy your uh, solution on the real drones. Uh, if we will have had time, I would like to show you some extensions and examples of generalization of this multi-goal planning, uh, which may be better, better fit some other, other aspects and uh, constraints of your real vehicles, uh, especially the uh, planning uh, with profits, which will not be the main topics of this talk. So what is the multi-goal pass planning? Uh, I will start with this uh, illustration from the, this uh, sur survey journal paper. Uh, it arises from different robotics fields. It's not only for mobile robots, but also for robotic manipulators. So you can imagine that you have a bunch of things to do at different locations, and the problem is, what is the optimal solution? What is the optimal sequence to visit these locations to perform some actions, uh, which is an, uh, the robotic manipulator domain, <coughs> but it's uh, very well suited to, to mobile robotics and surveillance and data collection or information gathering missions. So a brief uh, overview of the traveling salesman problem, which hopefully you already know. Uh, we will consider the version which is in a plane, so we can consider these cities, the locations in a, in a space, in a, uh, some map or plan. And we would like to find what is the optimal tour to visit these locations, which is basically the sequencing. So we are looking for the best sequence, uh, which minimizes the total uh, distance cost. The cost can be length or 
time, for example. There are a bunch of existing solutions from this, like, let's say, pure combinatorical uh, um, problem. Uh, definitely there are uh, exact solutions, which are usually based on integer linear programming or branch and bound, which is some sort of the combination. There are also a couple of approximation algorithms for these basic variants uh, of the, of the uh, TSP. And you should uh, be aware that there is the minimum spanning tree uh, based approach, which has been mentioned uh, this morning. And uh, the Christofides algorithm is a little bit better approximation factor. But uh, there are a bunch of heuristics algorithms. Uh, you can imagine the nearest neighborhood is just the most simplest. There are a little, little bit better to opt and link Carnegie. There are heuristics. And what is uh, quite nice that the link Carnegie heuristic, which has been developed in the 17th, has been efficiently implemented by Kant uh, Hasgam in 2001. And it's a viable, the algorithm, the implementation is a viable. You can download it and you can solve it. And you will use it uh, during the labs, during the practical seminars that are binding to this link Carnegie heuristic, which is uh, very efficient for the combinatorial uh, uh, problem definition, let's say. Uh, there are other uh, algorithms, um, mostly from the soft computing techniques. Uh, there is variable neighborhood search, which is also used by our, uh, in our research. There is uh, GRASP, uh, which is very powerful uh, construction heuristics. Uh, there is also uh, unsurprised learning and a recently growing self rising array. And maybe you may ask why we need all these other techniques if we have so powerful link Carnegie. So because uh, in robotics especially, in robotics we add some additional constraints. So we generalize the problem. And we are looking for a solution which fits the Turing Salzman problem, but we also like to better fit the real problem because the TSP formulation in this sense is some sort of the approximation of the real world to be uh, formulated and to be solved. And we are looking to more complex problems. And one of them is uh, curvature constraint. And uh, we would like to have not, like in this case, straight line, but we like to have a smooth connection with minimal turning radius, for example, because it better fits the real uh, fly of the drones. So, uh, what we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, couple of interesting uh, problems that you can find in the, in the, in the field. Uh, so, you may have a set of locations you would like to visit. Maybe you would like to visit all of them, and then you are asked what is the shortest or fastest trajectory to visit all these locations, which is sort of the TSP, traveling salesman problem. Or other case is that you have a limited travel budget, which is usually the case for these multi rotor drones, like 20 minutes, maybe hour, and you cannot visit all of these locations. Then in that case, you need to introduce some profits. You can need to introduce some rewards to visit the most rewarding, the most valuable locations, which is these uh, routing problems with profits, which is this dubins orienting problem, for example, uh, which is not covered entirely in this, in this talk, but uh, hopefully we will have a time to, to show you some results. Uh, so we will cons concentrate on the travel extension problem with dubins, and then we will add these neighborhoods. So let me uh, allow to spend some time on this dubins vehicle. Uh, are there anybody who doesn't know what is the Dubin's vehicle? Okay, at least one. Okay, so uh, Dubin's vehicle is a relatively simple model of the, of the motion where we assume there is the constant forward velocity and the robot is allowed to, to turn at some uh, minimal turning radius. So you can sketch the dynamical uh, equations describing the motion of the vehicle. And if you ask what is the optimal trajectory, because in this case, we have the constant velocities so of the path and trajectory is the same. And uh, if you solve the, the problem, you will figure out that the optimal connection between two locations with the prescribed orientation of the, of the vehicle, because we are not allowed to change the du direction orientation like immediately. So because we have this limited turning radius. So, you will figure out that the optimal solution of how to connect to these states, which is x, y, and 
uh, some heading, is a combination of part of circles and straight line segments. So you basically turn at maximum, go straight ahead and turn uh, to the, to the uh, re requested uh, final uh, state. So this is not difficult, right? It's already solved, I will show you. Uh, but uh, what we are looking for is that we have a bunch of points we would like to visit. And we don't have the orientation, the requested orientation, right? So if you have these, these locations, you can imagine that we can connect uh, the particular locations if we have the prescribed headings, the orientation of the vehicle, but we don't have it. So what is uh, available is the closed form solution uh, provided by Dubins in 1957. Uh, basically, the optimal maneuver maneuvers depends uh, on, uh, on the distance, measure distance of the locations and the headings, and we can uh, find two types, uh, C CSC, CCC, and the zero length are allowed. So basically, there are six uh, type of maneuvers. And uh, why this is uh, difficult in this context of the TSP? So this is kind of visualization that uh, we have this, this configuration uh, on the uh, one uh, X, we have uh, the initial heading and the terminal heading is on the other X. And uh, imagine that we will like change the, the distance between these two points. And we can uh, see what are the particle maneuvers type. So if you will take this example and you will get the locations closer and closer, and depending on the angle, then you will figure out that at some point, it's decreasing. The length of this optimal maneuver is decreasing, shorter, shorter. But suddenly, depending on the angle, you need to make this additional turn. And then, even that you are getting closer and closer, the optimal maneuver, the length of the optimal maneuver is, is longer than before. So, which means that the uh, length of the optimal maneuver is not uh, continuous function, it's not even monotone. And uh, that's the main, main uh, like difficulty or challenge we have in, in using the Dubin's vehicle model. However, if you consider that uh, your points or locations are very far from each other, basically it can be shown that if they are uh, far more than four times the minimum turning radius, it's actually always the CSC maneuver and you don't need care too much about the heading angle. So what we will uh, cover in the rest of the, of the talk is uh, different algorithms that can be very practically um, deployed because usually you don't have the dense, very dense uh, locations. Or if you have, then you need to ask for other approaches. So basically if you have like, let's say normal problem with very far locations, you don't need to care too much about the solution quality and you can grab whatever algorithm is available. So, uh, and uh, now uh, I will briefly formally introduce the dubin stravanik problem. So it is the same as for the TSP, we are looking for the, the sequence of, uh, sorry, uh, sequence of the, of the visits. So this is the permutation, how we will visit the locations. But that's the combinatorial part. But imagine that we need also to figure out what are the optimal headings at particular locations, which is continuous optimization. So we have N locations, and for each location, we need to figure out the optimal headings. So you can choose N variables from the interval zero to two P. So it's complex combination of combinatorial and continuous optimization problem. And uh, this is the example of the solution that we fixed the, uh, the sequence and we will just modify the minimal turning angle, the row. And you can see that what is at the beginning looks nicely, very close to the optimal solution of the Euclidean TSP. Depending on the radius, it gets worse and worse. So uh, this is like overview of the existing algorithms. And you can find, let's say, two basic groups of the algorithms. There are uh, sampling-based approaches and some heuristics usually based on the coupled uh, approach where, we, the, where the sequence is found by the Euclidean TSP or other, other 
sequencing algorithm. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if you have the prescribed sequence and the locations are far enough, like more than four times the, the row, the minimum turning radius, you can use the convex optimization to find the optimal solution. Uh, unfortunately, this is still exponential in the number of uh, uh, combinations you need to, to evaluate. Uh, recently, there are quite interesting results regarding the solution quality, which are based on the lover bound. So even that these algorithms provide some, let's say, nice solutions, you cannot say nothing about the solution quality, up to the lover bound. And uh, I would also like to cover like these theoretical results that can be applied in your, in your research and uh, deployments. So uh, what is the basic fundamental approach to deal with the dubins traveling salesman problem? In my opinion, is the decoupled approach. So we have the combination of the sequencing, the combinatorial power, and the continuous optimization, which should be solved altogether because it's mutually dependent. The best sequence depends on the headings, and headings depends on the sequence. This is very hard, and if you don't know how to solve it, just decouple the problem. So first, we will relax the curvature constraint, we will relax the minimum turning radius, and we will solve the TSP Euclidean TSP and find the optimal, maybe heuristically, uh, heuristic solution of the Euclidean TSP. Once we will get the sequence, so this is one, two, three, this is the sequence found by the Euclidean TSP. Then uh, we will concentrate on this continuous optimization and uh, we will find the optimal headings for this given sequence. So what you can do, this is continuous, how we can solve it, n variables, continuous variables, you can sample it. So we can choose, okay, I will split the possible headings like to this 2p interval to 12, 16, 100, 200 possible uh, locations. And then uh, you can create such a graph and you can solve this graph optimally. And you have a solution, a, ver a relatively good solution. And it, ca it can be also relatively fast, depending on the number of samples you are using and the size of the problem. Uh, other pro approach, which is called really the sampling and transfer or transformation approach, is that uh, we will also discretize the headings and we will transform this discretized dubin driven salesman problem to a variant which is called generalized TSP and hopefully you have a viable solver for GTSP and you can solve it optimally. So we will go uh, into the details for these two approaches. So uh, the sequencing part, so in the decoupled approach, we will relax the headings. So we have pure Euclidean planar TSP instance. You can solve it, you can use the Concord, for example, or you can use the Linkernigan or whatever you like uh, as a solution for the TSP. So once you have the sequence, like, like this, then uh, the problem uh, is the continuous optimization, and we call this problem Dubin's Turing problem to really specify, okay, we have the known sequence, okay? So uh, here, uh, this is the, uh, for, let's say, formal uh, problem definition. We are minimizing these headings. So we are looking for the optimal headings at each uh, location. And uh, what you can do, you can uh, take a really simple, very straightforward alternating algorithm, or you can use uh, some high climbing methods for the optimization, or you can use the sampling. So let's take a look what is the alternating algorithm. It's pretty straightforward. So you have the null sequence, okay? You need to determine the, the headings, how you can do that. Okay, we can uh, use the uh, even edges, and we will connect them by straight line. Having that, you have prescribed headings at the endpoints. Now you will solve the Dubin's maneuver, which is a closed form solution, and you will connect the odd edges, and you have the solution, right? Quite straightforward, uh, very quick, in a, by means of computational time, and not that bad, especially if the locations are very far each other. Or you can use this, uh, high climbing method, which we call uh, local iterative optimization, and it is pretty straightforward. 
is captured in this loop. And you can imagine that uh, you iteratively go through your tour and at every location you optimize, locally optimize uh, the heading. So do you know some continuous optimization methods like high fibing, so you locally optimize, you check or uh, the Newton uh, methods, so you check what, should I increase the heading, should I decrease the heading, and you iterate. It's super fast, it's a little bit uh, more uh, computation expensive than this one, but it's also not that uh, complicated to be implemented, and also it's quite powerful. I will show you, especially for these neighborhood things, I will show you the, the results later. Or if you have this sequence of visits, you sample the headings, and imagine that uh, for each heading, for the particular locations, you create these layers. So for the uh, first location, you will create these K headings, and for the next location, you will create another K headings, and you will connect. So this is the possible, uh, possible, uh, possible visits or possible uh, Dubin's maneuvers that from this location I will connect to this uh, second location using this particular heading. So, and uh, what you need if, you, if your solution is closed, because in TSP you are looking for a closed tour, uh, you need to add one more uh, layer that replicates the, the first layer. So you have this, this graph, it's not that complicated, and you can search using like dynamic programming or just forward search optimal, you can find the optimal solution in polynomial time. K is the number of the samples per each uh, location. And if you will not consider uh, the, if you are not looking for as, like, let's say, a like smooth connection of this closed tour, you have like open Dubin's tour, instead of this three, it will be two, right? because it will, you don't need to evaluate all the possible starting location, um, headings. So this is, pretty much straightforward. It can be implemented, in my opinion, maybe in one hour. Maybe you will implement it uh, this afternoon or maybe uh, tomorrow. But uh, this allows you to find optimal solution of the discretized problem with the given sequence. So it's still not optimal, right? Or uh, the original problem. So what is the sampling-based method? It's pretty much similar, but now we don't have the sequence, right? So, so we sample the, the heading angles. We have a bunch of samples for each location. We don't have the, the sequence. So it's actually the problem that is called generalized TSP. If you take a look to the literature, you will find, okay, there is the generalized TSP. What is the generalized TSP? You have set offsets and you are asking for the minimal tour visiting at least one location from each set. So if I have uh, four locations, I will sample uh, the first location by six, four, uh, and other numbers of, sound, uh, of headings. Then uh, the solution is just picking one of the, the, the location, the state, the heading, in our case, from each set, which corresponds to this, to this location. So this is just, just the uh, problem formulation. It doesn't uh, help you to solve it, right? But uh, it actually provides you the way how to say what we are looking for. So we are uh, minimizing the Totar tour, Totar Dubin's tour, and what we are modifying is this permutation. So you can imagine that you can generate all permutations how to visit these uh, this, uh, sets, and in, within the, each set you can figure out that, okay, what is the best location you need to visit. Uh, so if you are not a uh, fan of these optimization problems, you can uh, uh, take a look uh, if there is some existing ILP formulation, so you can formulate it in integer linear programming, or you can uh, grab whatever, what is a viable for free some, some solvers. And there are actually two relatively powerful. Uh, one is the generalization of this link Kernigan, generalized link Kernigan uh, uh, heuristic uh, by Hertzgaum. And there is also a relatively recent uh, GLNS, which is also a heuristic algorithm to solve the GTSP. And uh, it's written in Julia. If you don't, 
Are you anybody familiar with the Julia language? Nobody. So if you like Python and you don't like the computational performance of the Python, you can take a look to the Julia because it's fast, maybe faster than C. Uh, and uh, it has uh, the similar, like, straightforward uh, syntax. But uh, you will have a uh, link Ernigan heuristic bend it to your Python environment on the, on the practical part of the, of the summer school. So there is a method that can transform the generalized TSP to asymmetric TSP. Why asymmetric? Because we need to, to follow the direction how we, will, how we will visit the locations. And uh, in the next few slides, I will try to cover what is the main merit of this transformation, which has been proposed by Nun and Bean, and it's called Nun Bean transformation. So, uh, by the way, uh, you can also use Concord. Concord is available for free, and it's optimal solver of the TSP, and also asymmetric TSP. And one of the author is Vasek Hvata, who is actually today in Prague and will have a lecture in the afternoon. So, we'll probably not uh, attend, but uh, it's also a gr great opportunity to meet him. So, uh, I, will, I will cover the, the, the main idea of the, of the Nunbin transformation. So, uh, Basically, this is the, the, each set represents one location, and because we are looking for the headings, and we sample the headings to discrete sets, we have for each uh, set, we have these he headings. So, these are the locations. But uh, we need to visit this location, and that location, and that location, and we need to figure out what is the optimal heading, sample heading. Uh, so, this is the generalized TSP, but in the asymmetric TSP, we need to or in a regular TSP, you need to visit all the locations. In asymmetric, there are these arrows, so you need to, you cannot, uh, you are not allowed to go back. So, you need to create a graph, which will represent this original problem, but in the sense that uh, you will visit all these states representing different headings. But it should not add any, like, cost to your solution because it represents the same location, but just a different heading, right? So, this is the, the, the main idea. We will create, you know, within each cluster, within each set, we will create a zero-cost loop, and then uh, we need to uh, reconnect the particular locations uh, from one set to another set in such a way that we, if we find the optimal solution, then we will have the solution of the original problem just picking one of the heading at each cluster, right? So, uh, the first step is that for each cluster we will create this zero length cycle, so it's not that complicated, right? So we have uh, these three locations, uh, or three states representing the same locations with different headings, so we will add these arrows, and the rest, for connecting these uh, uh, nodes uh, will be infinity, or some big number. Uh, and then uh, we actually need to, if we will uh, go from these locations to this cluster, then uh, we need to go through all of this, but we need to guarantee that we will leave uh, this location uh, not uh, by, uh, by uh, immediate uh, visit of this and leaving because we need to visit all of these. So we need to up, uh, so we need to do this trick, but it's not really the trick. We need to ensure that uh, we will visit this location, go from all of them, and then we will leave in a different location, right? Is it, is it clear? <laughs> so one, one more. Or is it? Okay, so, uh, we will have this zero sum cycle. So we need to go from this location, this just one, so it's, it's, we don't have any choice, and uh, we will go to this, 
we will uh, go through all of this. And then uh, if you consider, okay, this is the zero sum, I visit all of them, it doesn't add anything to, to the to total cost. But now I, I visit th this and I need to leave at another point. So, and the, the trick is that uh, we have this Q1, which is connected with uh, Q2, with one, but uh, we will uh, reconnect this particular node, not with the original, but with the N plus one. So in this sense, we, we will leave the, the cluster from a different node, right? So to just to ensure that we will visit all the other nodes uh, within, the, within the set. And uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this big M approach, because uh, if you consider, okay, I am searching this, this, this for the solution, and I need to force the solver to actually prefer going with this zero sum cycle, and then leave it. So that's, that's the reason why we introduced this big M, to really ensure that the, that the solver will firstly visit the cluster and then we'll leave it. So, and this is uh, repeated for, it's, it's, it's really algorithmic, so it's repeated for any uh, connection between the, between the uh, particle nodes of each cluster. So if you're better, uh, if you like more the uh, distance metrics uh, representation of the of the uh, of the graph. So it's this is the original. Uh, sorry, this is the initialization. So okay, this is the infinity. Then we have this zero sum cycle, and then uh, we actually add this big M, but shift it to one uh, uh, another cluster or uh, another node of the cluster. So I'm not sure exactly if you will have the implementation available of the Nunbin. Yes, you will have it, so you can use it. So uh, even that you didn't catch the fully the, the details and uh, you will grab the idea and be able to, to use the available algorithms you will have on the, on the practical seminar. So uh, just a few notes that, uh, okay, uh, we need, okay, time uh, k per square and n square time because we have more uh, nodes and uh, a little bit more memory. You can imagine that uh, it, it's increasing in the number of locations you would like to visit and also the k, the number of headings you consider. So you can imagine that you will, if you increase the number of samples, you will probably provide, uh, you will probably find a better solution, but it will be more and more computation demanding. And that's the trade-off if you have the time or you really need to do the uh, solution quickly. Okay. So uh, now uh, I would like to briefly provide you some notion, maybe insights to the solution quality. So this is a demonstration of, the, uh, of what you can expect. If you have sampling algorithms, your solution quality will be better if you have more and more samples per each location you visit. It's not surprising. It's also not surprising that it's more and more competition demanding. Uh, or uh, you can choose some heuristic solution and you will find a relatively good solution in much more reasonable time. However, so I show you that in this decoupled approach with the sampling base a solution of this continuous optimization, you can solve it optimally using this graph search. Or if you discretize the problem, formulate it as generalized traveling cell problem, maybe transformed by noon being transformed to, to asymmetric TSP and solve it optimally. So you will have optimal solution, but of your origin, not your original problem, but your discretized problem. And maybe, maybe not, you are interested in what is the solution quality of your solution regarding the real optimum. And I have this academic uh, example to show how far you can actually be. 
So if you imagine that your locations are on a circle which has exactly the radius which is corresponds to your minimum turning radius, but you don't know it. So it's just accidentally you have these locations. And now imagine that even that you have the optimal sequence how to visit that because in this case it's probably the Euclidean TSP is good uh, solution. And now imagine that you will sample the headings. And what is the probability that you will exactly sample this one single heading that is part of the optimal solution? So it's not really a large number, right? It's getting to zero. So even that you will improve really high number of samples, you can still be very, very far from the optimal solution. And the idea is, is there a way how we can estimate the solution quality? Luckily, it is. And it is uh, based on this other problem. So if you all remember all these abbreviation, DTSP, DTSPN, DTR, ATSP, GTSP. So there is one more, uh, Dubin's internal problem. And it is a little bit more generalized uh, pro formulation of the original Dubin's maneuver. So you have the locations, but you don't have a single heading prescribed at the like leaving and arrival. Uh, angles of the vehicle, but you have the interval. And you, are, uh, you ask what is the distance of the optimal Dubin's maneuver connecting this location with that location uh, in, uh, in the way that the leaving angle is within this interval and the arrival angle is within this interval. Okay? Luckily, uh, Maniam show uh, there is a closed form solution for that. So you can, you can download the code and you can, you can solve it. And uh, if you remember that we have this decoupled approach and we have uh, sampled the headings and if you, instead of single heading value, you will consider what is between these samples, you will have the intervals. So these are the intervals. And in now uh, you can solve this by this graph search. I show you, uh, and it can be solved in polynomial time. But in this case, you will not solve the Dubin's maneuver, but you will solve this Dubin's internal problem, which is closed form solution. You will actually get lower bound. Why it's lower bound? Because if you have one uh, uh, heading uh, interval uh, from, uh, for example, for these locations, your arrival angle, particular arrival angle, from this Dubin's internal problem, is, uh, is different or can be different from the leaving. So there is a discontinuity in the, in the, in the headings. So it's lower bound. It's not a feasible solution by means of Dubin's vehicle. And if you take a look, uh, the red is lower bound, the blue is feasible solution, is upper bound, it's corresponding. So it's relatively tight and it's really tight actually. It's really tight uh, lower bound. So by this, Dubin's internal problem, you can estimate the solution quality of your particular solution. So it's not approximation algorithm, it's estimation. If you have any feasible solution, you can estimate it uh, by means of the of, uh, corresponding uh, problem with these intervals. So, and uh, I will show you why this is uh, relatively helpful also for in finding the solution of the Dubin's Fermanic Salesman problem. And uh, we actually employ this tight lower bound to improve and refine the headings or headings intervals. Uh, we recently called the algorithm iteratively refined inform sampling or IRIS for short. And I will show you this cartoon, how it's working or what is the expected benefit. So you can imagine that you have a relatively simple problem and you can start with very rough discretization, right? So we split this uh, 2P interval to four parts, four intervals. And uh, you can do that uh, from another uniform sampling, so you increase the number of samples. But in this I iris uh, approach, we actually split only the intervals which belongs to the solution of this lower bound. So it's informed by the lower bound. And we can uh, split it more and more. And uh, one more. And you can uh, see that in the end, if we have this resolution 2P divided by 
256. We have the same solution. We have the same lower bound, relatively tight, but the computational requirements are significantly lower. Okay, and uh, this is especially suitable if you don't have enough time, or you have, uh, let's say, you, ha you have some, some time, spare time, between the update of the, of the trajectory, between the update of, the, of your mission plan, you have some spare time, and you would like to use this spare time to improve the solution. So you can start with the very rough solution. You can immediately estimate what is the solution quality. It's not that good, and you can improve it until you reach your time limit. You can do the same with the uniform sampling, but it will be more demanding. And there is a, one more point is that uh, even that for uniform sampling, you can solve very, very complex problems, very large problems, very, uh, with very high quality, but at some point, it's computation intractable even using our like, new computational grids. This allows to solve uh, large instances I will not show you the results of what we have, but we actually use this technique to learn a neural network to provide quick estimation of the solution quality. And that's like superb DTSP server. Anyway, uh, if you take a look uh, to the comparison, if you remember this alternating algorithm, this Leo and this Iris, which also provides naturally the lever bound, you can see it's not that bad. Actually, it's even, even quite fine. Uh, alternating algorithm and Leo is in seconds, milliseconds. So we limit the, uh, no, the computation time in this case for 10 seconds. And one more important thing is that all of these ETSP are decoupled. So the sequencing part is found by the Euclidean TSP. And uh, in uh, a SLS sparring partner, uh, here we employ this memetic algorithm, which optimizes also the sequencing part, which optimizes the TSP sequence and also the headings and uh, we limit to one hour so you can see that with these algorithms you can get relatively competitive solution in much 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 less computation time so that's that's how you can employ or how you can benefit from like deep understanding of the problem to find a good uh, solution in less time and also be aware of what is the solution quality the lever bound so, that was the Dublin Serving Salesman problem. Hopefully you are well equipped to your practical parts. But uh, now we will focus on a little bit more general and maybe more practical uh, generalization. So if you have a drone and you deploy the drone for the surveillance missions, which has some downward looking camera, you don't really need to visit exactly the location. Actually, it's not even possible, even that we have super precise GPS, and it's not a, and a super precise trajectory tracker and so on. It still never uh, f exactly fit the locations. But uh, for your downward looking camera, you can exploit the large field of view, and uh, you can make a shortcut. Of course, uh, in this case, we, for the planning, we a little bit decrease the field of view to actually ensure that if there are some small disturbances, we still capture the object of interest. And uh, benefit from like cutting and not visiting exactly the locations, but choosing the best location within this region. And this is generalization, which is called neighborhoods, or dubin serving some problem with neighborhoods. And it's much more practical, at, at least from my point of view, than the pure DTSP. But it's also more challenging because now you don't have only the sequencing part, you don't have not only the how to find N headings, which is continuous optimization, we also need to figure out what is the optimal waypoint location within this disk, which has infinite possibilities. So it's another continuous optimization problem. This is just formal definition, it doesn't help you to solve the problem, right? But uh, provides you the, the way how to ensure that what we are looking for. So we are minimizing or permutations, n factorial, right? It's not a small problem. Uh, we are looking for n optimal headings, each from zero to, to p. And we are looking for n locations, x and y coordinates, from each particular disk. So we simplify this uh, for the disk shape neighborhood. So it's a very challenging problem. And all of these 
are mutually dependent. So you should optimize all of these all together. But it is uh, very demanding. So we will follow the same methodology, the couple approach. We will solve the ETSP, maybe ETSPN, Euclidean traveling system problem with neighborhoods if you have the server. Or you can sample, but you will not sample only the headings, but you need also sample the locations. So you will sample the disk to discrete set of locations, and for each location you will sample the headings. So the problem is getting larger and larger. Uh, you can also use the generalized TSP. And here you, it's really the, the, the matter where you can employ some other combinatorial heuristics like the uh, variable neighborhood search or maybe unsupervised learning techniques, which I will show you the results you can achieve with that. So, uh, sampling base. It's, uh, you, okay, so you can choose arbitrary sampling, but it may be makes sense to sample just the border, right? At least some point should pass the border of the regions. So you can, you can simplify it. And for here we have the S locations, for example, six. So we have six locations. And for each location, we need to sample the headings to really discretize the problem. And we have the same graph, or oh, it's not same, it's a little bit larger, but the principle is the same. You need to visit uh, one, uh, one region, second region, another region, and within the region you need to figure out what is the optimal location, and for that location what is the optimal heading. And you can use the same techniques. It's a little bit more, uh, let's say, uh, implementation demanding, but the principle is the same. And it's same for this noon bean transformation and so on, or generalized TSP. Uh, and uh, you can also use this local iterative optimization. But now you need to optimize not only the heading, but also the location. And if you remember the algorithm for the Leo, uh, it's pretty much the same, but we just add this optimized position locally. So it's independent optimization. So we independently optimize the heading and independently optimize the location. How we can parameterize the, the location if we consider that it's on the, on the reg uh, boundary region, we can consider like 0, 1 or 0, 2p, which is the distance on the, on the uh, like normalized distance on the, on the boundary. So, and if you take a look, what are the computational requirements? Uh, you will have the ETSP with Leo, maybe ETSPN, which should be a little bit better. But if you take a uh, look to the solution quality, this is the baseline, at least in this case. Uh, you will not uh, get too much by this alternating algorithm. Maybe the genetic algorithms are better, but the convergence is relatively slow. So you can imagine, okay, this is the, uh, one of the heuristics, and you have in less than second, maybe many seconds, a solution without solution quality. But it's very straightforward, and that's, that's the reason why it makes sense to add uh, or develop new algorithms that can be easily extended to our, let's say, more generalized problems. So uh, how is the solution quality? I show you the Dubin central problem. I really like to show you the results for the Dubin traveling cellophane problem with neighborhoods. And we cannot uh, use the Dubin central problem because we have the regions. So we need something which is called generalized Dubin central problem. And uh, I will just, to sh I, I like to show or what is the take home message. This exists, this can be downloaded and this can be used. So, or if you are interested in the uh, deep understanding, you can go to the papers. Uh, so this is generalized variant. So we, we don't have only the location, we have the regions. We have an interval of the headings and we are looking what is the shortest distance of the optimal Dubin's maneuver connecting this region with that region uh, constrained that the vehicle leaving angle is within this interval theta one and uh, arrival angle is within this interval theta two. So this is really a hard problem, but luckily it can be converted to this single side and that can be analyzed. So we did it or especially Peter did it. And uh, there is almost close form solution except one K, this is the seven K. And uh, it's, uh, it needs, or we didn't find the optimal solution, so you can try it. 
but we figure out that uh, can be solved in a convex optimization in few steps. And uh, just so one like practical points, uh, what is the computational cost of finding the optimal domains maneuver? It's less than microsecond. Right? It's not speaking about Python. Right? It's uh, in maybe in, in Julia or in uh, C, C++. The Dubin's interval problem without this region is a little bit more demanding, but in the end, we are still around one microsecond. But this generalized Dubin's interval, it needs a much more computation because basically there are these cases and there are the subcases which are not shown here. It's the same for the dip, and you need to evaluate, and then you need to figure out what is the shortest one. So you need to basically almost all of the uh, cases might be uh, evaluated and it's five microseconds. And now, is it fast or not? Is one microsecond fast? Probably yes. Is uh, five microseconds fast? Or nowadays computers, single core. So it really depends. So we employ this, uh, this generalized Dubin's central problem to this, in, to this iris schema, so inform sampling. And uh, you can see this is the really the lower bound. It's not connected, so it's not feasible. And just to show you what are the computational costs with this microseconds, right? So we have resolution four. We have 10 regions. And we are iterating, and we will get to the gap 1.3%, which is not bad. And the computation is 33 seconds. And it's only 10 regions. So if you scale it, this will be much higher, right? So even that five microseconds looks like nice, the problem is really, really huge. Uh, just a schema of this iris is, okay? Okay, so, uh, good question. Uh, maybe practically this is almost optimal. It's sh certainly sure, but 10% uh, may be not. And the, really the point here is that this is the method or the methodology that you estimate your solution quality. Without, without this, you, you cannot say anything. Maybe it looks like it should be optimal. Yes, it's, this is the relative gap to the optimal. But the important point is for a given sequence. We are not optimizing the sequence here. But it's uh, still the lower bound. It's like a valid lower bound of our original DTSPN problem. So this is the schema of the iris, not really demanding or any complex implementation, just one while loop and we iterate and solve this. Get it? Uh, interesting, uh, maybe very interesting that this is the idea. So we don't sample all domains. So this is for a particular location or region. And we are focused to really focus the sampling and really provide the dense sampling at the, the particular locations. There are some uh, highlights, how it is uh, converging and how it is scaling. You can see and maybe here is the gap, right here, the gap. Maybe this is, pra from practical point of view, this is optimal, right, right. maybe. Uh, but it's not really the, the question. It's le really about, okay, this is the methodology how we can estimate the solution quality. It's not about, okay, we have some solution and it, it, it looks good. Now we can really estimate it. And uh, you can download it. Uh, it's also at the GitHub and also at our, our web page, which where we usually, with some delay, uh, put the, uh, the algorithms, uh, usually the same reason as uh, uh, yesterday, Martin and Tomasz mentioned that uh, we, we really like to publish the, the code before it is uh, available, but uh, you may be, this is usable and also should be there the Julia implementation, if you like, or C++. Okay, now we will switch to multi-vehicle, multi-goal planning with Dubin's uh, vehicle which is called MDT SPN, and uh, it will be relatively straightforward. 
So because this is, uh, and there will be one slide which is really super important for you to score during the, the laps. But uh, the idea is that you have M vehicles and you are looking for M tours to visit N locations. So it has been mentioned yesterday and also uh, today morning that this is basically the allocation problem. Right? And uh, you should uh, be, uh, solve all these aspects all together, similar like in this Dubin's, the, the sequencing and the headings. So now you have more vehicles. But it's more challenging, right? So the decoupled approach where uh, you cluster first row second, so you can cluster the regions, maybe using k-means, maybe Hungarian algorithm, and as we mentioned yesterday, and then apply the previous slides or the results uh, showed on the previous slides, and you are done. Uh, I will show you the constructive heuristic, which is really very straightforward, can be implemented in one hour, maybe less, and really provide good results, at least what we, what we empirically evaluate. Or there are other compound optimization that do the things all together, but you can imagine that it is more, more complex, and uh, I will not cover that, uh, just show you some results. So this is the, the main slide for you from this presentation, I hope. This is the greedy constructive heuristic. So uh, we have a bunch of regions, we have two, three drones, and there are some practical insights, maybe. Maybe you can immediately observe. The drones are relatively far from each other. Why? Because if they're automatically uh, taking off and landing, you don't like to be very close to avoid possible damage, you also need some space around them. And uh, it somehow provides you the insights that maybe the clustering algorithm that will split this into three parts will be just, just good. And it's also uh, somehow included in this initialization or constructive heuristic that can be used for initialization of other algorithms. So, okay, so continuous problem, we don't like it, it's complex, so we will sample them. Uh, here I need to take a look. Okay, so it's uh, probably six, six, I guess, or eight. Uh, so we sample the locations for each region and we sample for each sampled location the headings. But we still need to cover just the regions, right? So what we do is that we will use the Euclidean distance of the, of the centers of the regions to the particular starting locations. So we, here we explicitly have the separated depots of, for each or vehicle. And uh, first step is that we will create a small tour. So the small tour is that we need to visit just one region. So we will pick up the region that is uh, the closest region to the particular starting location of the particular vehicle. And from that, uh, we will pick up the location that will minimize the Dubin's tour. So for each, so for each this location, we have six headings. So this is the state, and for each such a state, we need to compute this Dubin's maneuver, which takes less than microsecond, right? And we will pick up the, the state which will minimize the tour, this small circle, right? So this is the starting point. Now we, we have the regions uh, ordered in the, in the distance to, the, to, the, to these depots, and we will uh, incrementally examine them. And we will uh, choose the, the, re, uh, the particular robot and the particular uh, position of the when or like in index or label where we will visit the location. So if we, if we, have, uh, we have this simple sequence, we can choose if we will visit the next location as a first or last. Or if you have three uh, locations or four edges, then you need to, to pick up the best insertion and the best uh, edge where, when, when, where you will insert it. So that's pretty straightforward. But you also need to figure out that, okay, we have the 
free robots in this case. And uh, it has been mentioned uh, today morning that the TSP or multi-vehicle multi TSP can be solved by TSP and then just splitting the solution, which is called MinSum. But we really like to minimize the total time we need to visit all the regions, which is called MinMax, right? So we minimize the maximum, the, the longest tour. How we can do that? We can introduce the, this weight, and this weight has been actually introduced in uh, unsupervised learning technique for multiple traveling system problem. And if you take a look, what we, ha what we have here is the average uh, length of the Dubin's tour for each uh, robot. And we weight uh, the current Dubin's or current Dubin's tour uh, regarding the, the average, right? What does it mean? That we really uh, like to prefer to add the another regions we would like to visit to the vehicle which has the shortest Dubin's tour because we are minimizing the longest. So we prefer to add the new region uh, to the vehicle which has the shortest Dubin's tour so far. So, and that's covered here. And so that's the weight. So if, we, if this is uh, smaller than the average, then we multiply by a s smaller number, right? So that's the trick. So you got it? No? Uh, the slides are available, and uh, this is also covered in, uh, this, uh, in this article, and I guess you will have uh, the, the paper available, right? Yes, uh, because there is mo most of these uh, results are covered in that. But you, you, you need to figure out uh, what you will have the available because there are functions to evaluate the Dubin's tours and just putting the average, so you know how to compute the average, right? So it's even here, right? <laughs> So that's not that complicated. It looks complicated, but it's not really. It's two, four cycles a year, and one above to insert all of the regions. Okay, so I have a half an hour. So I will briefly switch to some, let's say, results. And uh, uh, motivation, what can be done if you will spend more time on the on the particular solutions. So I show you some, some algorithms, maybe they are fast, maybe they are not, but your deployment can be really specific. And one of these specific deployment we challenged uh, some years ago was that we really like to have quick solution because the drones are fast and if we spend 10 seconds in planning, maybe the drone can in 10 seconds, uh, in 10, uh, seconds uh, cover the, our region. So we really like to have uh, super fast by means less than one second. And we are looking for this multi-vehicle Dubin serving system problem with neighborhoods that will provide us a solution less, in less than one second. We are definitely not going to the optimal solutions, but it, it can be demanding. So uh, what we develop is a bunch of algorithms. One of them is based on unsupervised learning, and uh, another one is based on the variable neighborhood search, which needs to be initialized so we need to firstly create some initial solution. We can use this self-organizing map or this previously described greedy constructive heuristics. So, and if you take a look, what is the computational time for these approaches for the single core implementation? So this unsupervised learning can provide solution. It's actually, uh, at some point, is is decreasing with the number of robots, which is not the usual case of the algorithms, but here is the, the meaning is that you are splitting the, the problem and it's spatially dependent, not on the number of robots. So you, if you are smart enough, then you can exploit that. Uh, so uh, computer times in milliseconds, uh, this variable neighborhood search initialization, which is this greedy constructive heuristic, uh, if you don't have the neighborhood, it's quite fast, but if you have this neighborhood, because you need to add more sample, it's not like single location and eight 
uh, headings, you have 10 locations and multiplied eight headings. So it's more demanding, but it's still around second to second. And if you take a look, what are the computational, uh, 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 this is the length, uh, based on the computational time you have. So there is the memetic algorithm, which is the demanding, but probably converged to optimum. There is the variable neighbor search, which also improve if you have more time. And this uh, VNS one second is basically this one, uh, sorry, this one, because it's more demanding than one. The initialization is more demanding than one second. So this variable neighbor search, this one, it's not that bad, right? So you can implement it and you can score quite high. So if you like to beat others during the, the labs, uh, implement this. It's not that complicated. Okay. Uh, so now I will uh, spend some time on the generalization. And depending of your interest, I can go in some, some details. So first of the generalization is immediate, maybe. Maybe you don't realize that Dubin's vehicle is in 2D. So and you can ask what we can do in 3D, how it will scale. Actually, it depends on your model. So Dubin's vehicle is 2D model, right? So you cannot use it. But there exists another model, uh, which is called Dubin's airplane. And it has a limited pitch, but it's still not perfect model. We are in this model, we are allowed to uh, ar ar arbitrarily change the pitch at any, any point. So which may be true for some vehicles, like maybe, but not for all aircraft, right? So it's still uh, the approximation of like real uh, vehicle or really detailed dynamic uh, model of the vehicle. So there are uh, CSC maneuvers and CCC maneuvers. Basically, we can uh, distinguish three cases the, regarding the uh, mutual distance and especially the differences in the altitudes. If you imagine that you have two points which are at the same location but at different uh, altitude, you need to climb. So you usually need to add this climbing spire or helix that will allow you to climb because you are allowed to just go forward. It's not multi-rotor drone, right? So you can change the direction arbitrary. But there are different uh, aircrafts. So uh, you can also consider the parameterization of the regions, which can be 3D. And you can imagine uh, some basic uh, geometrical primitives. Even that it's in 3D, you can use just two parameterization, right? Two variables. And if you remember this local iterative optimization, Okay, we have one more dimension, no problem. We will add this local optimization and it will work. And here is the demonstration. This is the cartoon just showing the, what are the computational cost. So this is almost in real time. So the solution is found in a, oh, less than one second. And this is the dynamic problem. So we change just for the animation purposes, uh, the location of the, of the target uh, regions, 3D regions. So it can be quick. Regarding the solution quality, well, uh, we don't know. There is no, no, no such thing like a lover bound. We can only empirically evaluate and say, okay, this algorithm is better than this one, but how far we are from the optimum, we don't have the results yet. But uh, maybe you are more interested in this multi-rotom drones, which are very popular. And there is significant difference from the Dubin's model. Even the Dubin's is still uh, suitable for these. Your, your drones can move in arbitrary direction, right? And the only limitation is the maximum acceleration and maximum velocity. And depending on the control uh, approach you, you have, uh, you can uh, consider uh, like uh, independent, uh, uh, limits in the vertical and horizontal directions. So basically in this case, uh, we have 3D regions and we are looking to the best, fastest trajectory to visit all the regions in such a way that they will uh, satisfy the constraints on, uh, it's not here, 
yeah, here, unlimited velocity and acceleration, right? This is the only constraint. Uh, regarding the, the Dubins, uh, you have just, just note here, and you will use it in the, in the labs. Uh, the Dubin's vehicle, like pure Dubin's vehicle, consider a constant velocity. And depending on the velocity, you can actually determine what is the minimum turning radius. So you can consider a relatively large turning radius, which can uh, have the high forward speed, or you can decrease the radius, and you will have a small velocity for, for like taking the, 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 the turning maneuver. And then you can accelerate on the straight segments which can improve the like, real-time performance. And that's what, exactly what is expected you will, you will do for the, uh, preparing the velocity profile for the flight on Friday. Or if you will have uh, some spare time in your implementation, you can take a look uh, to some other parameterization of the, uh, of the trajectory. And uh, what we uh, used in our previous research is that we consider the Bezier curves. Why Bezier curves? Because Bezier curves is smooth trajectory. It has only four control points. And if you have this uh, multi-goal trajectory, so you have concatenate Bezier curves, then these uh, curves, two of these control points are actually the endpoints, and the second two points are the direction. So if you concatenate this uh, Bezier curves, you actually limit one control point of the one segment is another control point of the another segment and also the direction. So you can simplify or decrease the number of freedom of uh, decrease of freedom you need to, to optimize. So this is uh, a little bit more uh, demanding. And uh, this is a curve. And for the curve, you need to compute the velocity profile. So it's not that straightforward. Now, the, the, the length of the trajectory doesn't correspond to the, the time you take which may be assumed for the Dubin's vehicle, but not here. So uh, what we employ is that you have more degrees of freedom, not just heading. You have four, maybe three, or actually two uh, control uh, uh, parameters for each uh, Bezier curve. And you have the sequence. You need to figure out the sequence. And you need to figure out what is the location you would like to visit. So you need uh, some other, let's say, more general optimization framework. And what we de develop or what we employ is this unsupervised learning, which can be visualized uh, in this cartoon. So this is the, the number of learning epochs. So we iterate the optimization, and it is uh, improving the solution, and it converges to the state that uh, it satisfies the constraints which are the visiting the visiting the, all the regions. And during this optimization, we counter the constraints on the velocity and acceleration limits. So it's more demanding and takes like tens of seconds in a C++ implementation, if you're interested. However, it was for a single robot, and you are interested in multiple robots. But uh, for example, this uh, unsupervised learning framework can be easily extend it uh, to multi-robot case. We just duplicate the neural network by the number of robots you have. And uh, you can figure out these, these uh, solutions. But again, what is the solution quality? Because that's, from my point, my perspective is the most important part. Uh, okay, so it's somehow working. You can see what are the planet trajectory and what are the uh, real trajectories, but uh, regarding the solution quality, we can only estimate uh, if we will take a look to the velocity profile, and if we see that we saturate the velocity profile, the, the constraints, okay, maybe this, this is good. But we really don't know or just empirically evaluate what is the solution quality. Okay, so I have still uh, 15 minutes, if you are not tired. I will briefly describe the uh, routing problems with profits, which is the orienteering problem. And uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit more practical than the tra traveling salesman problem. But it's also a little bit harder, because in TSP, you need to visit all the locations. So you need to visit all. That's 
for sure. And it simplifies the things, because if you don't, uh, or you cannot visit all the locations, you need to select the subset. And which subset? It's actually a knapsack problem, if you know. It's NP-hard, so it's just the selection of the, of the best subset of the re regions or locations we would like to visit is NP-hard. So we have one more NP-hard problem in our problem formulation. So that makes the things a little bit more, more demanding. But uh, the key idea, or maybe from the practical point of view, is that we need to introduce this reward. So if we will visit this location, we will receive some more reward. And that can be tricky, how to set up the rewards. Uh, you need to, to, uh, to understand the practical domain, and okay, if there is uh, uh, some object of interest, maybe you can mark that this is more important object to see and uh, this is less important, but you need the knowledge of the, of the problem domain. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the problem formulation is that uh, we maximize the reward by visiting the locations. Without the neighborhood, we just visit the location. So, and we have limited tra travel budget. And you can expect that if we will have larger budget, like here, we will have higher reward. That's expected. So this is the pure orienteering problem. But we are looking for curvature constraint, so we introduce, or especially Robert, who is sitting there, <laughs> uh, introduced this uh, Dubin's orienteering problem. Uh, where we consider this uh, curvature constraints. And then you can uh, generalize it, okay, it's Dubin's orienting problem with neighborhoods. So in addition to this uh, selection of the subset, uh, solution of the sequencing part, solution of the optimal headings, you also need uh, to figure out what are the best locations to visit within each region you select to visit. And uh, there is also, uh, yeah, so both of these uh, approaches are based on the variable neighborhood search, which is very powerful combinatorial metaheuristics uh, that can be used and somehow tuned. And you can also consider the problem, the, there are these continuals, the neighborhood is continuous domain, the vehicle heading is continuous domain, so you can sample it. And then, uh, similarly to this generalized TSP, you definitely like. So you can, maybe you can like the set orienting problem. And you can solve it optimally. But it takes time. And uh, one of the insights that uh, allows you to solve these problems like from practical point of view in some reasonable time is that inside of this variable neighborhood search, which is combinatorial metaheuristics, you will benefit from the knowledge of this continuous optimization problems. So you don't rely purely on the sampling, but you inside the server, you solve this continuous optimization because it's faster if you know how, and exactly how is that you use the lever bound, for example. So and you can benefit from that. So it's another like practical point if you like to really find the, the reasonable solution in reasonable time. And a reasonable time means like seconds, minutes, then of minutes. Because otherwise, like set orienting problem, optimal solution is hours, maybe days, or maybe weeks on a computational grid. Maybe you don't have such time if you have like mission critical application. So uh, in addition to this orienteering problem, you can consider, okay, we have this 3D generalization of the orienteering problem using the Bezier curves, and we can also generalize not for a single robot, but multiple robot, which is called team orienteering problem. And we employ our unsupervised uh, optimization framework and we solve the problem, let's say in reasonable time, in a few minutes, maybe tens of seconds. And uh, the really what is here important is that it, I didn't mention any coordination. I didn't mention how we avoid mutual collisions. Why? Because yesterday you figured out that the uh, framework for uh, controlling the drones has uh, collision avoidance, so we don't care. We decoupled this. But here, if you have this team orienting problem, and you have limited travel budget, so it's exactly in 10 minutes or 20 minutes, the drone must be on the returning and must land, otherwise the battery are drained. And if there is a collision, there is this collision evidence maneuver, and there is the optimal trajectory follower, which will follow the, the optimal or the planet path in the optimal way, but will miss the targets. So really here, 
with the steam orienting problem, the coordination should be included inside the preparation uh, of, the, of the plan. Otherwise, if there is the collision, then uh, you will lose the, the reverse you, you expect to receive. So uh, finally, uh, we consider simplifications. We consider Dubin's vehicle, which is quite a simple model. Maybe you can extend it to Dubin's, Dubin's airplane. Maybe you can extend it to the Bezier curves. But there was no obstacles in, uh, in any of the solution I show you. Why? Because, uh, well, it depends on the approach. Or maybe you can uh, use the, some convex optimization even for Bezier curves. But in general, you can consider the problem as emotion planning. And now uh, that's the question if you are aware of motion planning and how difficult it is. So it can be P-space. So if you know these classes of the problems, P-space is really a difficult problem. And uh, you need to combine this with these routing problems, which is like pure TSP, it's NP-hard. So you have N factorial combination, permutations, how you can visit a set of points. And you can imagine that if you don't have any like dynamic constraints and uh, you need to figure out the optimal trajectories between all the locations you would like to visit. And a single point to point problem can be very, very demanding. And P space hard, for example. And imagine that you need to evaluate all of these combinations, combinatorial problems. It's really a huge problem. And one of the approach which is like rising uh, these days, not only by Robert, but also by Arion Plaku and uh, so on, uh, is that we, we try to integrate the motion planning into the into this routing problem and hopefully inform the routing problem about solution from the motion planning, the configuration space, how we sample it, and so vice versa, what is the the current routing where sh we should sample. And we, sh we should sample, or where once we will sample more, we will have better solutions that can improve our routing problems. And uh, this very recent work on a physical orienteering problem is exactly in this sense. It's uh, probably the first approach that combines both of the direction. There is the information of the, of the how the routing problem uh, can uh, can improve the solution of the motion planning and how the motion planning or improved motion planning problem can improve the routing problem. And probably you already see, uh, see this, so this is just the demonstration of, of that. And you can imagine that based on this, uh, you can further extend any, any other uh, d dynamic constraints you have on the vehicles. You can also introduce the coordination of the vehicles because you can co co uh, consider the, the uh, collisions, mutual collision of the, uh, between the robots. So uh, I would like to conclude just the overview of the, of the topics I try to cover. So after this talk, you should be aware there are a couple of things or maybe a couple of abbreviations. The first is Dubin's traveling sales fan problem, hopefully with the neighborhoods. And you should be able to solve this problem using decoupled approach, which basically means that you solve the sequencing part by equating a traveling salesman problem. And then you can focus on this optimization of the headings, for which you can use simple alternative algorithm, maybe high climbing in this local iterative optimization, or you just sample the headings and find uh, the solution in a graph. Or you are interested in solution quality using the lover bound, so you can download the solution solvers, this iris, uh, and uh, solution of the deep and uh, general Dubin center problem. If you prefer the sampling based combinatorial methods, you can s transform the problem by sampling the headings, sampling the locations into the generalized TSP and solve it by your heuristics, like GNLS or GLK high, uh, GLK high or you can transform to asymmetric TSP using the Noonbeam transform. Uh, having this, you are very well prepared to solve the multi-vehicle problems where you can employ this cluster first or second, so you will cluster k-means using Euclidean distance, forget everything. It will work quite reasonably, or you can use the Hungarian algorithm, or you can use this iterative construction heuristics, which is also working on the sampling uh, uh, discretized problem. 
or you really need a more powerful server so we can take a look to the variable neighborhood search or unsupervised learning techniques. And then uh, I also show you a brief, brief uh, taste or a demonstration of what are the possible generalization of the problems. Uh, you can consider Dubin's airplane model in 3D. Uh, you can consider Be Bezier curves or maybe splines. P splines, you prefer something else, but they are nice properties. Or in general, you can uh, use the motion planning. And finally, there is not only TSP, there is ma maybe more practical or orienteering problem because your drones have limited endurance. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to sh show or highlight some of the students contribute to this work. Uh, it's relatively old, uh, old uh, photo. We are like maybe in double or triple uh, in, in the size of the group. So thank you for attention. And if you have any questions, we have five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Jan. Uh, thank you for being perfectly on time, so I appreciate it. So we have time for a few questions. I don't know who was the first, so I <laughs> use this order. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, can these algorithms be applied for differential drive robots? Uh, you mean like uh, car-like? Yes. Definitely. And so uh, have you looked into Reed-Shep's curve where we can also reverse the direction of the vehicle? Uh, not yet, uh, but there is a recent work on this uh, Reed-Shep uh, variant of this Dubin's interval problem. So there are some uh, new results. But regarding this generalize, if you have the regions, uh, if you like it, uh, I will be really pleased to, to, to work together on that, <laughs> actually. So. Hi. Uh, you were talking in the end about generalization of uh, this problem. So what if we impose even more real-world constraints? For example, uncertainty of time that we spend at each location, you know, if it's like patrolling. Uh, so we also like spend some time at each location, not just traversing it. And also, if we need to visit locations with different frequency within the limited time. OK, so that's a very good question. Uh, two questions, actually. So uh, if you need to consider some time you spent uh, in the TSP, it actually doesn't uh, change too much because you need to visit all of them. Uh, and if you just, you just hover at the locations, or if you will add some um, like waiting maneuvers uh, for the like fixed wing aircrafts, it will not uh, change too much uh, because you will you will you will, you will do like like for the fixed wing you will make a loop. So and the, in the TSP you need to visit all of them, so you will add the so it's the additional constant. For the orienteering problem, it can be tricky, uh, definitely. And uh, you, can, you can include in uh, some of the solvers. And usually, if you consider this, uh, let's say, well-tuned uh, combinatorial solvers, it's relatively hard to include them. And that's the, exactly the reason why we are like, studying the address of computing, maybe in the variable neighbor search, where it can be much more easier to consider that. And uh, there is, uh, I will continue on, on that, there is uh, quite a Interesting problem if you have especially like the different payload. You didn't mention it, but that's also the, like, the generalization. You can consider that the different payload you have and you, you drop the packages, then actually have uh, some influence to the endurance. So you can figure out that, okay, so this, this is the, uh, if I have uh, like very uh, heavy payload, I should like drop it first because then my endurance will be increased. So uh, that's, that's for the, and the sec second part, was about, uh, uh, yes, so the frequency. Uh, you, can, you can figure out different strategies for that. And uh, the point is that the optimization criterion is not, as I show you here, it's not only in the minimization or maximization of the reward, but uh, it has different uh, meanings. Uh, there are some approaches and uh, there is a, uh, Basically two, <laughs> what I know. Uh, one is that uh, you are lo really looking for some uh, guarantee on the, on the like, minimal frequency or something. 
uh, in the worst case, so we can expand the, the, the search space into the infinity and in looking for some uh, policy that will guarantee the, or that will minimize. Or uh, what we did is we formulate, uh, but it's not published yet, uh, something which is called physical or uh, repeated orienting problem. So, yes, Rob, uh, repeated orienting problem. And uh, in, the, in, in that sense, you actually can, uh, okay, so you can imagine that you have a bunch of locations you would like to visit and you minimize the like age of the information you collect. And then you can, uh, you can, you can solve it as a sequence or repeatedly solve orienting problem. And that depends on the, actually on the policy, how you consider what, uh, what is the, the decay of the information you collect. So that's, that's you, you can build on the approaches uh, I show you, but you need to add more, or more constraints because you are solving a different optimization criteria. And uh, if may I <laughs> a little bit continue on that? Relatively recently, there is something maybe interesting for you, which is called uh, TSPD. It's not DTSP, but TSPD, and it's TSP with the drone. And the problem is that you have a vehicle, like delivery vehicle, and you would like to visit the customers. At, at each customer, you will send the drone to deliver the package. Because it's unlikely the case that the drone will fly from like Amazon warehouse. It will send the, the, the vehicle, the car, and then uh, it will pick up the, the, the package and deliver it. And the problem is a little bit more challenging because you can imagine that the, the car will drop the drone, continue the, the journey, and the drone will deliver the package and then it needs to reach the car. So there are a bunch of interesting generalization you can imagine. Uh, did you think about uh, different curves, for example, like uh, Cornu spirals? Because, for example, when I see this uh, Dubin's problem, uh, and you have this Dubin's uh, vehicle, Dubin's kinematic, uh, when you go straight and then uh, start uh, going the arc, uh, through the arc, uh, momentally uh, the inner force will occur in very, very short time. It is like you want to, in a infinitely short time turn the, uh, turn the uh, steering wheel. And for example, uh, when, we, uh, when uh, road builders create uh, roads, they uh, put some clotoids. So uh, th this is uh, the curve very similar to uh, Fresnel, uh, Fresnel integrals in, uh, in uh, light sciences. And then uh, this inner force increases very smoothly. So for, the, for example, for the driver, it would be very, very comfortable. Uh, so it would be, I think, also the, the interesting way how to construct uh, some path uh, not, uh, that will, from the straight line, uh, have some clotoid. Uh, so the curve th that uh, inner force increases smoothly, and then uh, it continues in the arc. I think that it is it would be also an interesting way of uh, research. Okay, so uh, it's absolutely true. Uh, I agree. That's uh, and also thank you for the pointing out that uh, I didn't explicitly mention that in the Dubin's uh, optimal Dubin's maneuver, we consider this bank bank uh, control. So we turn immediately right or, or left. And it's uh, absolutely true that it may be the, the cases that it doesn't hold, similar to this Dubin's airplane model, that it doesn't hold that we can change the pitch arbitrarily. And uh, that's, the, that's the question, how, what we can use. Uh, I show you uh, that even that with this relatively simple Dubin's model, there are still challenges. Maybe we push uh, the state of VR a little bit forward, but uh, definitely the general problem that we will consider all the dynamics is very challenging. And that's actually the reason why uh, we are working on this, like the motion planning, because in, uh, in motion planning, uh, in the sampling-based motion planner, you can relatively, let's say, easily or straightforwardly in 
include these additional constraints. And uh, even that's a problem for the like point-to-point -point planning itself, but uh, in this multi-goal, it's more actually more uh, evident that we really need a good solvers for uh, for this point-to-point -point motion planning that can be included in these routing problems. So, uh, thanks for the comment. Uh, we are trying actually for the area of vehicles. We are trying to figure out what will be the more general but still usable model. Uh, especially with uh, Douglas Macharet, if you know him, and uh, so we are not so far. <laughs> but, well, it will be like small step to include additional constraint, but it will not be definitively general. It will take much more time to, to figure out the, the practically usable solution. Is there any approaches to use multi-objective optimization for like those planning problems? Definitely, uh, I'm not really uh, like big fan of the multi-objective because you can, you still need to figure out some some Pareto front uh, what will be your case. And uh, in my opinion, it's like the the research field itself, and uh, you really need the good understanding of the domain you are trying to solve. Uh, it's similar to this orienting problem: how you figure out the reverse. You also need a deep uh, understanding of the like the application domain itself. And uh, it can be uh, included, uh, but it's not covered in our current work. Uh, last call for questions. If there is no more, uh, thank you again very much, Jan. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for helping me. <laughs>